Welcome to another collectible review brought to you by Come Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. Today on the show, we're reviewing Ghostbusters, the ultimate visual history. Forward of this book is by Dan Aykroyd, introduction by Ivan Reitman, written by Daniel Wallace. I got this almost a year ago at uh, Barnes & Noble. If you guys remember on one of my book hauls, uh, showcase this a little bit. Now we're going to do an extensive review on this. First of all, the cover is very nice. It's done in the same style as the uh, movie poster, the original movie posters. Uh, the back, uh, it is hardbound. Pretty thick, too. There's the back. Who are you going to call? The Ghostbusters saga has been thrilling fans around the world for over three decades. From the original movies to the animated shows, comics, video games, toys, and other collectibles. For the first time, Ghostbusters The Ultimate Visual History takes a comprehensive look at the entire franchise, telling the complete story behind the creation of a true pop culture phenomenon. Beginning with an in-depth look at the original film, Ghostbusters The Ultimate Visual History delves into the archives to showcase a wealth of never-before-seen concept art and photography that will take fans into the production of a true classic. Also featuring a large section of Ghostbusters 2, the book brings together exclusive interviews with key players from both films, including director Ivan Reitman, stars Dan Aykroyd, Ernie Hudson, and Scorny Weaver, and producers Michael C. Gross and Joe Midjuk. The book also explores the creation of the real Ghostbusters and Extreme Ghostbusters animated shows, featuring interviews with the writers, animators, and voice artists, plus previously unseen sketches, animation cells, and other stunning visuals, with additional sections on Ghostbusters comics, video games, merchandise, and fandom, Ghostbusters The Ultimate Visual History is the last word on one of the most popular franchises of all time. As you can see, it also includes Peter Venkman's business card, Sedgwick Hotel storyboard booklet, rare concept, rare concept art sketches of Ghostbusters and gadgets, Stay Puft Marshmallow Man package sticker, protection notes, and schematic of the Gozer Temple miniature. Here we see some pictures that are inside. Now some of this stuff was also included in the Ghostbusters 2-pack DVD set. Right here. As you can see, there's a booklet in there. It has a lot of the same stuff in it, but this this is mainly a summarized version of this. It's pretty much like, um, well, at least of the first two movies in this book. It's kind of like the Reader's Digest version, if you will. Has concept art, logo art. I can't remember if this book actually has the logo, different logo designs that they went with, that they thought about using in it or not. But we'll see. Uh, we'll go over this another time, though. So anyway, let's go ahead and open this up. As you can see on the inside, we got the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. Some uh, ghosts, Slimer. Then the Ghostbusters logo. Scene of the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. Got some more ghosts with looks like Peter, but that could even be Ray and Egon. Because it looks like the scene from Ghostbusters 2 where they're down in the uh, subway, the old subway, which Peter wasn't a part of, but maybe in early storyboards he was. Uh, so I don't know. 
But as you can see here, uh, the original movie, the uh, table of contents here. We got the foreword by Dan Aykroyd. If you guys want to read that, I'll give you a minute. All right. There's a nice picture of Dan Aykroyd holding the ghost trap. And uh, Ray scanning the picture of Vigo from Ghostbusters 2. Nice photo of Ivan Reitman, Ray, and Peter. Or Dan Aykroyd and Bill Murray. Here's the uh, introduction by Ivan Reitman. Very nice. It's a nice picture of the four Ghostbusters. I'd actually kind of like to have that as a poster. Maybe blown up. That image of Bill Murray, though, it actually almost looks like wax. <laughs> like they replaced him with a wax figure. Like maybe he wasn't uh, available for photos or whatever. <laughs> Who knows? I like that. It's really nice. uh, here's one of the designs. One of the uh, logos they thought about using for Ghostbusters. Which I believe that one is in the uh, DVD booklet. Let's take a look. Kind of. It's right there. But they put the Ghostbusters sign right behind it. I'm glad they didn't go with that logo, though. It wouldn't have been as iconic. Same with that one or that. That's a pretty gruesome looking ghost right there. Storyboard from a gozer scene. Ghost Chasers. Terror Dog. Script Description. Large Canine Type. Onion Head. These are some, uh, I guess, notes. We see the artist going over the storyboards. Sorry for the background noise, guys. It may be a little bit better than the old studio, which was inside of a mobile home. Uh, but I need to find some way to soundproof this room. Uh, so you may get some back right, background noise from time to time. Because there is a road right outside. It's not as busy as the old road, but still. You got Reitman. Uh, Rick Moranis and Dan Aykroyd there and Sigourney Weaver. Quick note, pop quiz, tell me in the comments below how Ghostbusters and the original Die Hard movie are linked. There's two ways that both movies are linked, so if you know, put it in the comments below. Alright, we got the original Spangler jumpsuit, pretty cool. All that's actually shaving cream. Nice shooting, Tex. See here that one of Murray's pant legs is actually tucked into his boot. Wonder if this is one of the la one of the first scenes shot with them in their uniforms. Maybe he uh, tried it out and didn't like it or whatever.
I'm not going to go through every single page, but I'll leave that up to you guys to buy the book and go through it. Uh, here's a storyboard. This is actually included in the movie Scrapbook, which came with the DVDs. Which actually looks... Eh, yeah, it's shrunk down for this. But this exact thing was in the uh, movie Scrapbook. You can see their original designs. They were supposed to have helmets, I guess. The design of the proton pack. The original sketch. Pretty cool. This looks a lot better than that. And then the original sketch for the trap. Which, again, this looks a lot better than this. I guess the PKE meter was originally called the GEV meter. Psychomagnetheric Geiger Electron Voltameter. Uh, resembles a weed eater or minesweeper with electronic television monitor and onboard computer. <laughs> I'm glad they went with this. If you notice in this scene in the movie, Sigourney Weaver actually makes it a point to move this hand here as, right before she gets pulled through the uh, door. Because this hand, they couldn't really see what they were doing and this hand grabbed her breast. So, uh... That'd make it for a nice poster, too. Sorry, guys. I got a bit of a cold, so my nose is kind of clogged up. Here's another note card. Shows the design of the uh, apartment building. The crew with Slimer puppets. There's the library ghost, the actress who plays her in makeup, closer look. You don't really get that close of a look at her in the uh, movie. I'm glad they included that. Slimer, aka Onion Head, pretty cool. The, <laughs> the dream ghost that goes down on Ray. It's actually a nice image of her. You don't really get that close of a look at her either in the movie. The escapees. Those are pretty cool designs. A concept art for the terror dog. I'm glad they went with what they did because these... Could have been just a little bit too scary for kids. Mr. Stay Puffed. Different concept arts for him. I think this is the closest one though. Stay Puffed Marshmallows. Stay Puffed even when toasted. We got the preview card. We would appreciate your filling out this short questionnaire. Please print. And turn over. Some nice images when they were shooting the uh, poster scenes or poster art. Pretty cool. Now his son gets to follow in his footsteps. P. 
Peter Venkman's business card. We got some uh, designs of the Ectomobile Mark II, which later became known as Ecto-1A, which I'm glad they went with that. Uh, I have always wondered, though, with the license plates being Ecto-1 and Ecto-1A, are they two individual vehicles, or are they the same vehicle, just with some updates and a new license plate? Uh, often enough in, uh, through fans, they're kind of referred to as individual vehicles, but to me, it seems like it's the same vehicle, just kind of updated, upgraded. Uh, and then in later works or whatever, they revert back to the original paint job or whatever. I don't know. Some Vigo. Some concept art for Vigo. Vigo as a Statue of Liberty. <laughs> that would have been kind of cool. I like that. guess there were originally supposed to be three Scolari brothers, it looks like. Perhaps. That's cool. Got some more concept art. And the Ghostbusters hard hats. This came unglued I'm gonna have to maybe glue it back on as you can see there's a spot there it is glued right there lays over top of it nice uh, cell then we got some catch sketches for the slime blower uh, gun part or cannon, whatever you want to call it. How they brought the Scolari brothers to life. Slimer Mark II. His bone structure. <laughs> the jogger. I've always liked that poster. I'd like to get a new one. I had one when this uh, movie first came out. In fact, I had a booklet full of mini posters and everything uh, from Scholastic whenever I was in... I think I got it when I was in second grade. And I had it, all the posters and everything hanging on my bedroom door as a kid. The Expanded Ghostbusters Universe. The Extreme Ghostbusters. There's an animation cell of Peter and Slimer. Pretty cool. Some uh, sketches. Ghostbusters video game. IDW Ghostbusters. Another sketch. And the toys. Overall, I really like this. I still have not had a chance to read over every single page in this book. I do eventually plan on getting into it. It's just this year has been super hectic with school and work and everything. But now that I'm on winter break, I can probably sit down, relax, and read this front to back. 
So, overall, I really like this. I like the uh, detail. It almost feels like a textbook. Um, and it goes well with the movie scrapbook that came with the DVDs. Uh, they could have almost sold these together. In a, but I can understand why they wouldn't. Because this came with these. At some point, I need to get the uh, Blu-ray pack. Maybe I'll get the... Uh, once the Ghostbusters Afterlife movie comes out on Blu-ray, they'll sell it in a four-pack with the first two movies. Plus the... Uh, Answer the Call Ghostbusters movie and the Afterlife movie all together. That'd be pretty cool. I know a lot of people didn't really care for the Answer the Call Ghostbusters. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I had my problems with it, but I still enjoyed it and I will watch it from time to time. Uh, I especially like the action scene there towards the end. Uh, it, it was a good. It was a good update. It was a good uh, reboot, I guess. But I'm really excited for Ghostbusters Afterlife. So, if you haven't already, head out to Barnes & Noble or try and find it on Amazon or eBay or whatever and pick up Ghostbusters, the ultimate visual history. Till next time, geeks. Take care. If you enjoyed that video, make sure you hit the subscribe button right there so you stay up to date on all things geek culture. Also, go ahead and check out one of these two playlists on the side for more videos just like the one you just watched. I'm Shannon for Comic TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. Take care, geeks.